Hey, brothers and sisters. So I wanted to address what I believe is the number one sign of the last days. And if you remember this week, I put out a short and what I said was the number one last day sign is people would not put up with sound doctrine and they would heap up for themselves teachers according to their itching ears. Okay, so I want to address this topic from 2 Timothy chapter 4. But I'm going to build upon why I think this is the number one last day sign. Okay, so 2 Timothy chapter 4 starts out in verse 1. It says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Why? Verse 3 tells us For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. So essentially, people to tell them what they want to hear, what they what they need to hear, not necessarily based off truth, but what they uh, want to hear, what satisfies their flesh. And verse 4 says, And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Now, fables refers to any false ideologies, viewpoints, and philosophies that oppose sound biblical doctrine. But then it says in verse 5, this is what it tells us, But you, be watchful in all things. We're to always be watching for this false teaching. Always be watching. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist, which means always be preaching the gospel, always be teaching truth. Fulfill your ministry. So Paul has this admonition to Timothy, which we can apply to the last day's church, that there will come a time when people will not endure sound doctrine. Now, in Matthew 24, verse 4, the number one thing, or the, I shouldn't say the number one thing, the very first thing that Jesus said to his disciples about the last days would be that there would be many false Christs. He says, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. So deception will be on the rise in the last days. Now, why do I believe it is the number one sign of the last days? Well, in order for the Antichrist to build his kingdom, in order for the Antichrist to get his kingdom, in order for Satan to build his short-lived seven-year kingdom, people have to be deceived. Now, not everybody will go along with the program. We know a lot of people will be killed during the tribulation period. But don't we see a period of time now where so many people are being deceived from different angles, whether it be through news, headlines, uh, false teaching that is not according to the Bible, just lies are pervasive in our society like never before. And so people are more willing to, to believe a lie than to believe the truth, right? Now, if we go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Paul also tells us this. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, one of the things that have really motivated me to do this particular video was just all the videos that I am seeing that draw a ton of views and a ton of comments and gives people this false security, this false excitement about the rapture. Now, that's just one topic. But then when I began to brainstorm how lies and deception are taking place in every facet of our society, I began to see that the thread is people suppressing the truth. People only wanting to hear what their itching ears tell them or what the false teachers tell them. 
Now, we could talk about false teachers within Christianity. We could talk about people telling lies, politicians telling lies, government leaders telling lies, um, news outlets telling lies. But it all has the same thread. It's an antichrist spirit. And people will be ripe for deception during the tribulation period. That's why I think it is the number one sign. Now, Jude, if you go in your Bible to Jude, Jude 16 says, These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. There's a lot of personalities on YouTube that are flattering people. They have a likable personality. They draw people in with their humor. They draw people in with their with their um, personalities. And then they turn around and they mix truth with lies to suck people in. And if you don't have discernment and if you don't know your Bible, you can easily believe these lies. I myself have fallen into that trap. Verse, seven, verse 17 says, But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. Why are people out there promoting false teaching and spreading lies and deception? Because they're serving themselves. They're serving their own ungodly lusts. Verse 19 says, These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the Spirit. So I like what it says here. Apostate teachers advertise themselves as having the highest spiritual knowledge, but actually attracted to the most debased levels of life. Okay? So these people do not have the Spirit, which means they're not saved. Romans 8 is very clear. If you do not have the Spirit of God, you are not Christ's, okay? So these people are not even saved. A lot of people out there are saying they're saved and promoting biblical teaching, but they do not have the Spirit. Now, the Antichrist is going to work through deception. So we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to see some of the things that he's going to do to deceive the masses. Verse 8 says, And then the lawless one will be revealed. And I believe this is after the rapture of the church, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. And we know that Satan is the father of lies. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Why? Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. And that they all might be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had, uh, excuse me, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So what is the thread here? Ungodly lusts and pleasure in unrighteousness, serving themselves. Why do people why do people not put up with sound doctrine in the last days? Because they are serving themselves, they are serving their flesh. Why do people fall fall for the lies of these unbiblical theories about the rapture? Because they want it to happen so bad that they're willing to forsake the truth and willing, unwilling to dig deeper and to find out if this is true or not because they want it so bad. And why can I say this? Because I myself, three years ago, fell into that trap. I wanted the rapture to happen so bad. I started following these supposed watchmen with all these theories and philosophies that the rapture was going to happen based on this, not according to the Bible. I fell into the trap. And now three years later, I take a look back and I, and I ask myself, how did I ever, how was I ever so deceived by that? How did I fall for that? It was because I was walking in my flesh. I wasn't listening to the Spirit. I wasn't uh, paying attention to those red flags that the Holy Spirit was giving me. But thank God I came out of it. And that's why I believe it's my job now as a true watchman to expose some of these things that people might fall for. And I know it's hard, brothers and sisters, we're all... 
We're all going through that battle. We're all going through that daily battle, that fight against the flesh and the spirit. But at the end of the day, we have a charge in the New Testament that we are to preach the word, that we are to teach sound doctrine. It's These ideas are to eliminate people from knowing the truth. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the gospel. And essentially, it's to brainwash everybody into a group consensus or group think. That is why I believe that people not putting up with sound doctrine and essentially suppressing the truth is the number one sign of the last days because it is the thread that brings everything in, into play. The Antichrist can't successfully gain power unless it's through deception. The Antichrist can't perform lying signs and wonders unless it's through unrighteous deception, as it talks about in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. People will perish because they refuse to repent and did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. People are going to be ripe for deception because they hate the truth. Romans chapter 1 tells us that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Why? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Why? Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness? Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. But because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. We are living in a society of Romans 1 fools. People that check their mind at the door, they don't they don't check to see if things are true or false. They follow their emotions. And a lot of people now, even in the Christian community, they're putting their authority and weight in the dreams they receive. And, and I think that's dangerous, brothers and sisters, because I think Satan could be sending people dreams too. Just because you got a dream doesn't mean it's from the Lord. Okay, and I can't speak to everybody i'm not going to paint a broad brush and just say hey everybody that is getting dreams is it's from satan i'm not saying that we know that god still manifests himself in different ways but ultimately it has to line up with the word of god but i do see that dreams are very prevalent i mean just look on youtube everybody has a dream yet if you look at these dreams examine these dreams they all contradict each other they all seem to be saying different things. And so that's when we got to begin to question, okay, if you had a dream from the Lord, it should be clear and it shouldn't contradict God's word and it should line up with what other spirit-filled believers uh, are saying. And so really question dreams, okay? we Our final authority should be the word of God. It should always be the word of God. I think Satan is working overtime to deceive the church He's working overtime to deceive the prophetic community. He is working overtime um, in the world in general to prepare the way for the Antichrist so people will be ready for these lying signs and wonders. And just, if you doubt that people hate truth these days, look what happens to the two witnesses. Now, the two witnesses in Revelation, Revelation 11, they're going to be able to preach the truth unhindered for three and a half years and they're going to be warning about the great tribulation ahead and they're going to preach the truth so much that people are going to despise them and hate them to the point that when they die they the world is going to celebrate that these powerful two witnesses are dead okay no the church is gone they thought they they thought they got rid of the truth tellers well now here comes the two witnesses on the scene it says in Revelation 11, verse 7, When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. I believe this is Jerusalem. 
Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. This is an absolute disgraceful way of showing that they despise these two prophets. Verse 10 of Revelation 11 says, And those who dwell on the earth will mourn over them? No, rejoice over them. Make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. The truth torments people that do not want to hear it. Romans 1 says people suppress the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2 says that people refuse to hear the truth so as to be saved. This is, I believe, the number one sign of the last days that we are near the tribulation, that we are near our blessed hope, the rapture of the church, that people will not put up with truth, that people will gather around them false teachers according to their own ungodly lusts, according to the weakness of their flesh, and that will be the thread that the Antichrist will use, which is deception, to build his kingdom. But at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, we know that Jesus Christ will destroy this kingdom. Truth will prevail. The knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth during the millennial kingdom as the waters cover the sea. And God will rule with righteousness and justice. So brothers and sisters, I pray this is a blessing to you. Please share and like this video. Allow the truth to get out. And as always, keep your discernment caps on. Keep your eyes open. Be watchful in all things and preach the word in season and out of season. Maranatha.